Now that we've looked at how lights work, let's practice actually lighting a scene in Cycles. We'll be using this bedroom scene that you can also follow along with in the project files. First, before we actually add any lights, I'm going to set up a lighting workspace, and that's going to make our lives a little bit easier as we go through this. Now to make a new workspace, since we don't have an actual lighting one set up, we can right click on say layout and duplicate it, double click and just call this lighting. Then in the outliner, I'll minimize everything and select the lights collection. And that way when we add a new one, it'll be automatically added to it. Now we're not going to need the timeline here. So I'm going to right click on the area between and join areas, click on the timeline and that'll just disappear. Then we can split this from left to right by going to the top left, left clicking and dragging over to the right. And let's also split this one more time uh, vertically this time. So let's left click and drag from the bottom left and drag up. And so this one is going to be our rendered preview. So we can turn off our gizmos, we can turn off our overlays and set this to be rendered. And you can make this as big as you'd like. And then this bottom one is going to be our node editor. So we're not going to do a lot with nodes, but we'll probably have to touch them here and there. So this will just make it a little bit easier. We can switch from our 3D view to the shader editor and turn our sidebar off just by collapsing it all the way. Now we have one 3D view port in which to work. I'll set it over to wireframe view. And then we have another one to see the result in. First, let's add our sunlight. Shift A, light and sun. I'll go to side view and place it above the house. Again, it doesn't really matter where it's placed, but that's just convenient. And then I'll rotate it so that the light is coming in through the window. Now, of course, just because it's a daylight scene doesn't mean the light has to be coming in through the window, but I think that it'll make a nice pattern along the bed. Now it's up to you to decide where you want to rotate this, but because wherever the light lands is really going to draw the attention, I want to draw the attention to the kind of the main part of the image, which is the pillows here and the wall. So I'm going to have this rotated uh, probably a little bit upwards and a little bit more towards the wall. somewhere about there. So it's hitting the pillows, it's hitting the bed, it's hitting the nightstand, um, but it's creating a nice pleasing shape here, all contained within the image. One thing that I didn't want to do was go like this and lead the viewer's eyes off the side of the image, but that's up to you. And we'll talk a little bit more about the artistic side of lighting in a later video. But for now, just use the shadows and highlights to make a pleasing shape. Once you have it positioned however you want, then we can increase the strength. Let's go to the light tab in the properties editor and pull this up. The soft maximum is 10, but if you type in another value like 15, it'll let you do that. Now this looks much more bright like real sunlight would be. It's important to note that we are using filmic, which is the default here. But if we were using standard, as was the default before, you can see this is already really blown out. So we want to make sure that we are using filmic. Now we can go back to our light properties and set this to be a little bit warmer of a color, like the sun would be. Next, we should also set the brightness of the sky. So let's go to our world tab here and click on the circle next to color to introduce a sky texture. Then we can set the strength to something much higher. We can just continue cranking this up until it looks like a believable value. I'd say 50 looks pretty good here. Now, if we look at this, this doesn't quite look like a daylight scene, just because the rest of the room isn't being illuminated as much as you would expect. If sunlight's pouring through the window, you'd expect it to be at least fairly bright throughout the room. And we can double check that we have enough bounces by going down to light paths in our render properties. And we have it set to 16, which is fairly high. So that should be enough. So there's a couple things that we could do. Number one, we could increase the strength of the sun or we could change the exposure. And since the sun is the only real light in the scene, I guess there's also the sky, um, but because we're mainly focused on the sun, it's only relative to itself. So whether we change the exposure or the strength of the sun doesn't really matter too much. So we could increase the exposure here and that's going to blow out the sun and kind of blow out the sky as well, but we'd get a value that we'd actually expect. Now, of course, it's all really noisy and we could increase the viewport samples if we want to see that be uh, refined a little bit further, but this is one way of doing it. I'll set this back to zero 
and instead just continue to increase the sun. Let's settle for somewhere around 50, at least for now. Now you can see that the bounce lighting is much more obvious and we're kind of brightening up the rest of the room. Now we could brighten up things even more one of two ways. We could either go to the world tab here and turn on ambient occlusion and we'd have to switch the distance to be something smaller than the size of the room. So we could go something like 10 feet and turn down the factor. So that'll just brighten up everything except the crevices, but that kind of makes everything a little bit gray. So instead, what a lot of artists do is create an area light right outside the window to kind of simulate extra light coming in from the outside. So we could hit shift A, add light and area, rotate this 90 degrees and place it right in the window there. Go to front view and line this up and then scale it up. One extra note while editing this, I noticed that I left the area light rotated at 90 degrees, but actually you'd want to angle it downwards a little bit so that it simulates more light coming from the sky than on the ground. Otherwise, if it's just left at 90 degrees, then you get a little bit too much light on the ceiling as opposed to the floor. So rotate that down a little bit, set the strength to somewhere around 250, color it a little bit like the sky, and then continue on. Then we're going to get a much softer and brighter result. That is maybe not necessarily realistic in terms of the difference between the light from the sky and the light from the sun, but it does lighten everything up so that it all fits within the same exposure. If we were to render this out, we'd get a pretty convincing daylight scene. And before we render, I'm going to head to our render properties and switch our sample count from 150 to 50. So it's going to be much less detailed. Uh, if you'd like to keep it detailed, you can bump that up, of course, but that'll just save us a little bit of time as we're working. You can either go to render and render image or hit F12. All right, so here we have a daylight scene and let's go ahead and save this out with image and save as. I'm going to call this bedroom. Day 01 and save it as a 16 bit RGB PNG. Then I'm going to switch to a different slot. I'll switch to slot one here. And then we can render out again uh, and compare the two images. In a previous video, I talked about using real world values or at least something a little bit closer to real world values. And since so far we've only been using the one sunlight, we're, we don't have any lights to compare it to. And so it doesn't really matter whether we change the strength of the sun or the exposure of the scene. They, they're both doing the same thing. Um, but if we have any other lights to compare to, for example, if we had these lamps on, then it will actually make a good bit of difference. So what I'll do is I'll turn these lamps on, which might be um, kind of ridiculous given that it's a daylight scene, but we can see how much of a difference that actually makes. So let's hit shift A and add a point light here and place this inside the lamp. Because the lampshades are using translucency, which is a topic we'll talk about in the fundamentals of shading, if you're not familiar with it, uh, they'll actually work like real lampshades and let some of the light through. So let's go to our light properties here and change the size down to more of a light bulb size. Let's set the color to be pretty warm and the power to be about seven. Maybe a little bit warmer than that. And that's a, a pretty believable believable value there. Again, remember the watts isn't the amount of electrical watts needed to power it on, but the amount of energy that's coming out as light. Now let's hit Alt D and create a linked duplicate. So instead of Shift D, um, this will create one where the properties are linked so that if we change the value of one, it'll change it for the other one as well. And now that we have more than one type of light in the scene, it really does matter the difference between the lights. The sun is just not bright enough compared to the lamps. Now, perhaps this is a pretty cloudy day in which in case we'd want to soften this light a little bit. And then that would make sense if we set this to say like five or 10, then this could be pretty believable. But let's try to increase this and make it a, a little more fairly sunny day. I'll hit backspacing, go back to the default, which is 0.5. Two, six, and we're going to increase the strength to something much, much higher like we talked about before, which is 750. So the range for the sun is massive. It goes anywhere from 1,100 all the way down to 250 or so, uh, just depending on the type of day, the cloud conditions, all of that stuff. So there's just so many factors that go into it. 
But for something like this, where it's um, not quite noon, maybe even say 600, uh, the lower it is in the sky, the more atmosphere it has to pass through and the less bright it will be. But it's still going to be way, way brighter in comparison to our lamps. So this is going to have a couple effects. First, it's going to bounce a lot more light around the room. Obviously, the areas where it hits is going to be overexposed. But we're not going to need that area light trick, so we can turn that off and also uncheck it from the rendered view. And so our bounce lighting from the sun is going to be much more natural. Now we could also set this to a realistic color by setting a Kelvin value. So let's set the initial color to white. I uh, just switched to HSV here and set the saturation to zero. And then let's click use nodes. And then for the color, we can attach a black body converter. And a value for the sun is about 5,250. So you can look up Kelvin values for all different types of lights online. And the sun is generally around 5,000-ish. It'll get a lot lower during sunset, of course, but during the day, uh, it's around there. We could also use Kelvin values for our lights as well. So we can set this to be completely white as well. Use nodes and attach a black body converter. And for a lamp like this, typically it's going to be about 2,700. That's going to give us a really nice natural looking light. Now the next step is to change the sky values as well. So we can switch from our shader editor from object, go to world. That's going to look at our world. And a value for this that I found just by trial and error and comparing this with real world values uh, is going to be about 200. So again, that's not something that you could immediately just know off the top of your head. Um, I had to do a lot of testing in order to find that and match it up which again is why uh, I introduced the extra lights add-on, which does all this stuff for you. But now the lights from the sky are actually illuminating the room like we would expect. And we don't need that area light trick from before. Now, if this is way too overexposed, obviously we could go to our render properties and let's minimize this stuff, go down to exposure under color management and just decrease the exposure. So we could either expose for the sunlight, in which case the room would be a little bit dark, which is you know believable, given that sunlight is always pretty bright. If you try this with your camera phone, you'll find the exact same effect. Or we could increase the exposure and expose for the lamps or somewhere in between. And I'll go for somewhere in between, kind of like this. Right about there. We can hit F11, make sure that we're in a different slot than before, and then hit F12 to render. Once that's done, you can see that we get a really good, pretty natural looking scene. We can compare this to the first one by switching slots, but it's not going to be completely accurate because switching the exposure for our render also changes the exposure for our previously rendered image. So we can't compare one to one. So what I'll do is I'll save this image out, save as, and click the little plus button here. That's going to increment it, which is a super nice feature that I think only Blender has, and then just save this out. Once I've saved as, then I can open this up in file browser. Here's the first one and here's the second. You can tell that the second one looks much more like actual daylight than the first. Of course, we have a little bit of different colors from the lamps here, but the colors of our bounce lighting and the amount of coloring from the sky all much more naturally matches what we would expect. The last way we can light this scene is with an HDRI. So instead of using a sun in the sky, we can use an environment texture instead. So first I'm going to hide our two lamps there, just to ignore them for now. And I'm going to introduce an environment texture to our sky. So make sure, again, our shader editor is set to world. And then we can go to add, texture, and environment texture. Click open. And I'm going to use the dry field texture that we looked at in a previous video. I'll plug this into the background. And we don't know yet what strength we need this background to be at. So what I'm going to do is just not connect anything to the world output there. So that it's completely black and the sun is right now the only thing lighting the scene. So I'm going to set the exposure to be set like right for the sun. And then I'm going to hide the sun and attach the background back into the world output and change the strength here until it matches. Now the sun isn't actually coming in the room, so what we need to do is rotate the HDRI so that we actually get at least some sort of pattern on the bed or the wall. So in order to do that, the easiest way is to just hit N to pop open the sidebar. 
go down to texture mapping under item and rotate the Z. So if we rotate this around, then we're going to get some light from the sun coming in. Again, this is a nice crisp shadow because this has a lot of stops in the HDRI. It's a high quality one, even though it's fairly low resolution. And I'll rotate it to about there, about negative 80. Actually, I think I want to go a little bit less than that. Okay, so negative 81.5. And actually this value seems to be about right. We can switch to our false color here in color management and see what our values are. And this actually is spot on. Uh, we have a little bit of orange, which I happen to like. You can change that to your personal preference. But I think that's about the same as what we were getting with the sun. Let's double check that. Turn on the sun. And yeah, it looks like the sun is a little bit darker. So we could go ahead and decrease the strength of the HDRI a bit, maybe to 150. And there we go. Now I think it matches. So now what we can do is go back to Filmic and turn on our lamps and make sure we're not rendering the sun anymore by clicking the render icon and changing the exposure to whatever we want to match it to. So if we want to expose it to the inside, it'd probably be zero or a positive value. Uh, if we want to expose it for the outside, we can lower it. So I'll go somewhere in between, right about there. And I'll try to try to match our image that we just rendered out. So it's blown out a little bit on the pillows, but not too much. Probably about there, about negative two. Okay, let's hit F11 here and switch over to another empty slot, which I guess we don't have to since we're saving them out anyway. Uh, but then let's hit F12 and render. All right, once that's cleared up, then let's go ahead and save this out. Image, save as. Again, click the plus button to increment and save as image. If we compare number two to number three, we can see that the main advantage of using an HDR is that we're getting much more natural colors in our bounce lighting. We're even getting a little bit of green from the trees outside and things like that. The sky is a much more natural color. And you can even tell that in some of these shadows up in here where you might not necessarily expect it right away. Of course, it's still a little splotchy because we didn't use that many samples. But overall, it just looks much more natural. Diffused lighting on the blanket here, especially, uh, also looks improved. I also like how we're getting a soft shadow on this little knob here, even though the sunlight isn't hitting it directly. So just this light from the sky is causing that shadow, and that's kind of cool. But overall, there's not a massive difference. So the overall advantage of using the HDRI is, of course, that you're going to get much more natural colors just automatically, and it's going to be much faster to set up. The downside, of course, is that there's less flexibility in where you place the light. Uh, if we wanted to place the light exactly as it is in this shot, that would be very difficult to do because it's kind of fixed. You can you know, rotate it around the Z axis, but that's about it. The other disadvantage is that it could be a little bit slower to render or, or a little bit more noisy. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Though we could, of course, use this area light that we set up before as a portal if we wanted to. So we could go over to the light panel and just turn this on as a portal and then it'll clean up that noise a little bit faster. Now to finish off this practice, I think it'd be good to also light a night scene just to compare the difference between that and a day scene. So let's switch our HDRIs out. Let's click the little file icon and this time I'll use Kloppenheim, uh, the 1K version. Open that up and it's going to be kind of a, a field with some stars above it. Now I'm going to go to my render properties here and reset my exposure by hitting backspace and turn the strength of the background down to one, just to kind of reset that. And if we rotate around, we can see that we're getting some good night sky. We got the moon that's pretty bright uh, coming in through the window and some buildings in the background. Now I'll hide the point lights for now. And I'll even turn off the background by just disconnecting it from the surface. So everything's completely black. And what I'm going to do now is add a sunlight that's about the strength of what the moon should be, just so that we can set the HDRI to the correct strength. There is a moonlight in the extra lights add-on, or you can just duplicate this sunlight here. I'll enable it really quickly and then hit shift D and then hide the first one again. This one I'll double click and rename to moon. Let's go to our lights properties. And I happen to know the strength of moonlight is actually very, very small. It's 0 0.0001. So it is incredibly dark. And we could actually see it if we go to our exposure and pull that all the way up. We can sort of start to see it. 
uh, maybe it's not that extreme. Maybe it's actually, um, could have gotten that wrong. It's maybe 0 0.001. That is quite a big difference. But even so, you know, it's very, very dark. So it's not going to contribute to our scene much at all. However, now that we're not using, you know, sunlight, we can increase our exposure a little bit. But let's go ahead and try to match our HDRI to that moonlight and see if we get a pretty believable result. So our moon is currently set to 0 0.001. So let's go ahead and hide our moon and then plug in our background here. And you can see that this is way too bright. So let's set the strength to, let's try 0.1. Still too bright, let's try 0.01. Mm, and that's still a little bit much, so let's go 0 0.005. Okay, I think that looks about right. And then once we go ahead and turn our lamps back on, then of course those are gonna be way overexposed now. So we go over to our render properties, turn down the exposure. And now the outside is actually believably bright in comparison. So if we kind of blow out these lamps a little bit, we can actually see some of the outside lights and we're gonna get some nice uh, purpley or blue color from that. But you might not necessarily want that, so we can probably pull this down a little bit. Uh, but we're still going to get some of that color coming in and also some of the lights from the buildings on the outside uh, will give us a nice effect. We could also rotate this, of course, if we want. Um, it's still rotated to the negative 81. Uh, let's turn up our exposure a little bit and just kind of look at this and see where we want the sun to be in the sky or the moon. And if we want it to be where more buildings are visible or whatever, you can change that to your liking. Uh, and then just turn the exposure back down to be suitable for the lamps. All right, so now we, we have our night scene. Um, but one thing that I don't like especially is this big dark shadow right in the middle of our image. You know, it looks pretty fine over the bed and looks very natural, but just this large dark splotch where our main focus is just doesn't look very attractive. So here's where we can use our creativity a little bit to try to improve this result. And so we have to think of not just the lights that are visible in our image, which is the lamps. We can kind of make up where the lights are outside of our image. So let's take one of these lamp lights, this point light here, and I'll hit Shift D to duplicate it because we'll want to change it up a little bit. And I'll place it kind of in the middle of the ceiling here. If I place it too low, it'll be kind of reflected in the window and won't look very attractive there. So let's pull it up closer to the ceiling so it's out of sight, but still affecting our image. And that kind of chases that shadow away and makes it a little bit more inviting. I'll turn down my exposure just a little bit. Let's set it to about two actually, just so that the lamps aren't quite as blown out. And now let's try adding one more light. I don't know whether or not this will work. I haven't actually tried this yet, but we could give it a shot uh, of putting a pretty strong light out in the hallway and having that kind of come in through the, through the door and casting a shadow onto the bed. So let's hit Shift D and move this light over here. And let's hide all of our other lights. We can actually name these so that it's actually easier to see what's what. We can call this one Lamp 1. And this one Lamp 2. We can call this Bedroom Ceiling. And this one Hallway. All right, so let's hide everything but the hallway light here. And if we place it out in the hallway here, so we kind of get the effect that there's a door open here and it just adds to the impression that there's more beyond just what we're seeing in the camera. Now we might want to turn this up a little bit so we can make this a bit brighter. Let's say it's a really bright light and that could be even 15 which is, which is really bright for a house light um, but that could still work and we could also make it a little bit cooler than the others if we want by increasing this temperature to maybe 3500 so it's more of an LED type light. Now we can enable these lamps again and I'd say the result is looking pretty good. Let's hit F12 and render this out. All right this is looking nice and cozy. So there's a lot we could do here if we wanted to change this up for artistic effect. We could increase the strength of the moonlight if we wanted to, just to make that a little bit more interesting or change maybe the color temperature of this image as a whole in post. But overall, I think we've hit our goal of rendering this out as a night scene. 
Now that we've done both day and night, my challenge to you is to render this out either as a sunset or a sunrise scene. So whether the lamps are on or off is up to you or what the position of the sun in the sky is. But I'd like you to render out as one of those two and try to get those nice colors. You could either use an HDRI from HDRI Haven or you could try to set it up yourself using you know, a sun lamp, uh, maybe an area lamp if you want to, have a little bit more control over the colors that are bouncing around in the room, uh, as well as a sky texture. It's really up to you. You could try using some of the lights in the extra lights add-on, or you could try using the photographer add-on to change the color temperature of the image as a whole. Whatever, whatever you'd like. But I'd like you to give one of those two a shot, maybe both if you'd like, and post those in the community. So you can go to cgcookie.com and head over to the community here. And once you have a result that you're happy with, you could post your daylight, your night scene, as well as your sunset or sunrise to either your work in progress thread. Um, a lot of people have like Blender progress threads that they've just started once they started a course here and then just kept posting their results. Or they have a poly book, which is like a sketchbook, but for 3D stuff. And if you don't have one of those, you can just go ahead and click new and forum topic. And you can call this, you know, your progress or your poly book or whatever you want uh, and post your three results. And if you'd like to tag me in it, you can just type at and then J Lampel, either in a comment or in the body of the post and I'll get a notification to come check it out. So once you do that, I'd love to see what you came up with. You can be a little creative with it or have a little bit of fun and I'd love to see it. So once you do that, then head over to the next video and I'll see you there.